Hello, my friends. Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. Today, I am bringing you 13 unique ways to update old bases. So let's get started. So for this DIY, we are going to start here with this vase that was $1.99 at the Goodwill. And although it was it had a very nice design on it. I wanted to give it a little something more bright and a little bit more uh, textured. So I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree caulk and I am going to literally spread it all over. This is actually very therapeutic and kind of fun. I can also see this being fun to do with kids. So, But messy. <laughs> messy. So as you can see, I'm wearing a glove, but it does come off with water, but it's just easier to wear a glove. And I'm just going to spread it evenly. It doesn't have to be really thick. A thin layer is fine. Once you have it spread out evenly, I just took literally one of those shopping plastic bags, rolled it up into a knot, and then started twisting like in circles. Now you really can't see it here because of um, the color underneath the vase, so uh, the, the original color of the vase. But once I start painting it, you're gonna start seeing that texture. So I'm just gonna start to, again, roll around in a circle all over the place kind of like staggering them as evenly as possible and then let it dry i let it dry overnight but you really don't have to it's just the way my schedule was working this day it will dry in a couple hours um and you can paint over it so as you can see nothing very technical nothing very difficult just twist around and um you can see there my bag kind of came off it's fine it's no big deal and what's the worst that can happen if you mess up you just roll it all over again spread it around and start all over so I'm just going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and you can start to see there the beautiful texture and design that it's going to have and I gotta say I put this one first because this truly is one of my favorite I love there's something about taking a vase or anything else and giving it texture that I really enjoy and really love and that's why I do it here in my channel often but look how beautiful that texture is it almost looks like flowers I just love it and um, again two coats was all that I did you can always dry brush another color on top you can do all kinds of things in this video I'm going to keep things bright and airy and do a lot of things in white but you can certainly take the inspiration and do any other color you'd like but look how beautiful this face turned out all right so for this next diy i am going to use these two candle jars from the dollar tree one's taller than the other one and i'm going to wrap the bottom of the smaller one using this very thick and plush yarn from michael's i am going to hot glue just the bottom and the top portion of the yarn and that way I don't have to hot glue all of it because I want it to be able to I want to be able to squish it as I go and you'll see what I'm talking about as we continue So after I had the bottom one nicely secure, I'm just going to roll around a few times and then start squishing down to the bottom so that I have as little as possible gaps in between each thread. I am going to hot glue the last thread there and I am making sure that I made the cut right where I started the other one. That way all those seams are going to be towards the back of the jar or the vase. I keep calling it jar. What's wrong with me? I had a little gap there that I couldn't um, get uh, further down. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue and a small piece of yarn just to cover it up. And that way it just kind of blends in. Of 
for the taller one, I am going to do a, the similar thing, except I am going to just wrap the middle portion. All right, so now I'm going to take some jute twine from Walmart and I am going to start doing the same thing, making sure to start right where my yarn ended. And I'm going to wrap it around, not as much as the yarn, but maybe about an inch and a half on top of it. And once again, secure it right where the other one ends. So that way all the seams are in the back of the vase. And for the taller one, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do about an inch on top and an inch on the bottom. We're just about done with this one. I'm going to add some florals from the Dollar Tree. And I think these vases turned out so beautiful. They're just simple, very farmhouse, but almost very elegant. And I just really love the way they look. For the first DIY, I am going to take these two Dollar Tree vases. They are glass and they are similar in width, but obviously one's taller than the other one. I am going to join them together, placing the taller one inside the smaller one using E6000 as well as hot glue. Once it was nicely secured, I am now going to take some caulk from the Dollar Tree and start rubbing it all over the vase. So I am creating here a textured uh, vase that you would never think came from the Dollar Tree. So once I have caulk all over the bottom, I'm going to start my, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. I'm just going to start pretty much just rubbing it all over the place, but making sure it's not um, where I just smooth it like in a smooth, it's kind of like sideways um, strokes and not necessarily lifting up the gloves to make it spiky in any way. I just need you, I 
I let it dry for about a couple hours and now I am going to give everything one coat of Waverly chalk paint in the ink. And guys, this is probably one of the most satisfying paintings I have ever done. And I have painted a lot in the last years. And I don't know if it was the texture of the vase or the amazing coverage this paint has. But I truly, when it was done, like when I was done painting it, I was like, oh, it's done. I was enjoying myself so much. I just wanna love you, just wanna hold you, just wanna be with you till we grow old. Just tell me you'll stay or take me away. I want you for myself every single day. You set my world on fire. All right, so now that it is dry, I am now going to start placing the gold flakes. And these are very light. So if you have a fan going, turn it off. <laughs> I had to turn my fan off because I knew they were going to be flying. I'm going to use some Mod Podge to apply them. I'm sure there are many ways you can apply them. Maybe with a top coat or I don't know. Mod Podge worked very well for me. I'm going to go section by section. Reason is because I don't want the Mod Podge to dry. kind of dries quickly. And secondly, I've never worked with this, so I'm learning as I go. I'm going to keep it in real time here for just a few, just so you can see how it all works. How, and I may not even be doing it right. I don't know, but I've seen other people do it, and I think this is how they do it. I'm just going to use my instincts and just keep placing as I see fit. I just wanna love you, just wanna hold you, just wanna be with you till we grow old. Just tell me you'll stay or take me away. I want you for myself every single day. You set my world on fire. You set my world on fire. I just want you. I just need you, I don't know what it is you do, I just want you, I just need you, I don't know what it is you do. All right, so now that I have the gold leaf kind of where I want it, I'm just going to seal everything. At first I thought I'm just going to seal where the gold leaf is in but then i decided to just seal everything because even though the mod podge is a matte it does leave a sheen um when it dries so i wanted to make sure the whole vase had the same look i let that dry i added some florals from the dollar tree and guys i love it i'm not much of a glam girl you know that i love my farmhouse rustic kind of look but this turned out so adorable. I think that next time maybe I'm going to try it on white. And I think that's going to be more my style. But nonetheless, it turned out so beautiful. Thanks, Casey, because you had me try something I've never done before. And I love the way it turned out. All right, so for this next DIY, I am going to use the jute twine that Casey sent me, and I'm also going to be using some of that same ribbon that I used earlier. Now, at first, I thought I am going to take one strand of the ribbon and then four strands of the jute twine, split it even, and braid it together to create one strand. Well, as I was doing that, <laughs> I realized that as you're braiding, because it's such a long strand, that you're braiding on top, but it starts to tangle on the bottom. So once I was about, I don't know, a few strands in or a few, I said, nope, stop it. 
<laughs> Let's move on. So I did end up braiding maybe about, I don't know, maybe 24 inches, but it's pretty long. So I stopped and then you're going to see it here in a second how I ended up just doing it. So I taped the one end vertically on the vase. This vase is from the Dollar Tree. And then I started to add just a small little row of hot glue and start hot gluing the first go around. So the first um, layer is going to be hot glue. That's because we want it to make sure it's secure. And then I'm just going to start rolling it and pressing it down as I go up. Now, I honestly don't know how far up this is going to take me. It was hard to kind of gauge, but I'm hoping it takes me to around where the curve is. And you're going to see what I do afterwards. So once I start rolling, I start then once I'm once I'm reaching the end of my strand, I then start hot gluing again, so to secure that last few uh, go-arounds. I watch you as you dry. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help but feeling Just loving you can see here how I'm no longer have like the braid. So what I'm doing is I'm just twisting the jute twine as well as the ribbon um, as I go. So I just kind of twist and glue, twist and kind of, you know, you see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and it actually looks exactly the same as the portion that was braided. So I'm glad I did not spend all that time braiding it because it would have taken me forever. All right. So now that I got where the end of the strand took me i'm going to take some more jute twine this one's a little thicker this one's from walmart and i'm just going to finish wrapping the rest of the vase at first i thought maybe i just you know add more of the ribbon but I actually love the way it turned out Next DIY, I am going to take some Rust-Oleum chalk bean in the linen white. I'm just going to scoop about two tablespoons and then just a little bit amount. Well, I'm going to eye out <laughs> about the same amount of um, spackle. This is spackle from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to mix it up. I'm just going to make a very thicker chalk paint. This is going to have the texture of a like melted ice cream kind of. And then I'm just going to start painting this glass vase from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to give it about one and a half coats. So just one full coat and then just adding here and there as I need it. And I'm not concerned with brush strokes because I want it to have a lot of texture. Hey, I've been dreaming about you. Every night I see the clearest day. Just something about the way you make me feel Cause I can't concentrate now I am going to take this faux leather from Amazon and I did I did add it to my Amazon store so a lot of the supplies that I do use if I don't get it at the Dollar Tree or um, any other dollar store they are on my Amazon store guys so check it out it is down in the description box I cut out about an inch thick strip and then cut that in half and now I'm going to take these thumbtacks that I already had on hand. I'm going to cut off the little pointy part. And I'm going to just make some faux leather handles for this vase. Look at the texture on that vase, guys. I love, love, love it. 
So I'm just going to loop it here on one side and do the same thing on the other side. Now I did hot glue it at first, but then I had to uh, later on change it and add some E6000 because it did come off very easily. So if you're going to recreate this, just go on straight to the E6000 and um, that way it won't come off. But that's it for this one, guys. Another beautiful one, high-end looking vase. It looks like it's either concrete, cement, or, you know, just ceramic. It's just beautiful. I really love the way this one turned out. Alright, for this next DIY, I am going to take this thrifted bamboo mat and one of these Dollar Tree vases, and I'm going to just wrap it with this um, mat. So I'm going to cut what I need and then hot glue it in about three or four places to secure it, and then cut any excess mat from both the top and the bottom. I am now going to take this Dollar Tree lace ribbon and I'm just going to tie it on in the middle and make a very simple bow. And that's it guys. I'm going to add a floral or a flower from the Target Dollar Spot and that's it. Such a beautiful vase. So unique and it has like a tropical feel to it, doesn't it? For this DIY, I am going to start with this vase. It was given to me by a cousin who was just spring cleaning and getting rid of some decor that she didn't need or want. So I'm going to give it a very summer vibe kind of beachy look. I'm going to start by applying some of the Rust-Oleum chiffon cream on the bottom and then I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to give this a very beachy look by blending several colors that remind me of summer. So the second one here is um, the Agave by Waverly Chalk Paint. So it looks pretty rough right now, but the key is to make sure that you are blending one color to the next by mixing them and really is just trying it. I mean, I'm not an expert blender <laughs> when it comes to painting by all means, but I think this one actually turned out really well and I got really lucky. And then, I, like I said, I went, I made myself... I made my way up. There you go. The next color I used was Moss by Waverly. And then I finished it off with Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Coastal Blue.
So I'm just finishing this one up here. I'm just going to um, continue to add the darker blue on top and continue to blend to make sure that I have it where I want it. And then after that, I just added some florals from the Dollar Tree. And that's it, guys. This one turned out so high-end, so beautiful, and I think it will look great in any home for summer, especially like a beach cottage or really any home. For this next DIY, I am going to use the Apple Barrel beige paint that Massey sent me. And I am going to take some spackle. You've seen me do this before. It's just a little mixture to give the paint a little bit more of a thicker consistency. And it's also going to apply um, more textured on the surface. I want this um, vase that I actually thrifted at the thrift store several weeks ago and I wanted to have more of a ceramic look so I'm just going to apply two coats of this mixture all around the vase. I am now going to take some more of that agave waverly chalk paint in some um, rustoleum white chalk paint and I'm just going to start blending in kind of uh, towards the middle it has those ridges and I just wanted to highlight and give it a little bit more of a summery beachy look so I'm just going to start place you know just brushing the paint and then blending with the white I did add then a little bit more of the beige color from the apple barrel paint and I'm just going to let you watch here as I blend. The key is just to keep going until you have a nice blended tones where it's not um where it's a smooth transition from color to color. I am now going to take some of that beautiful burlap ribbon that Massey sent me and I'm going to cut about 8 inches off of it and I'm going to fold it into threes and hot glue it together. After I cut out one of the ends to make it very smooth, I'm just going to start hot gluing it on the upper edge of the vase. Just going to just finish it off. I think it's going to add some more texture to this vase. Adds a little bit more of a beachy, summery tone to it. And once it's hot glued, guys, we're done. I added some flowers from the Dollar Tree. And this vase is stunning. I love, love, love the way it turned out. The texture is out of this world, guys. I wish you can actually feel this vase. So textured, so beautiful. And I just love the way it turned out. For this next DIY, I'm going to take this bottle that I thrifted a couple of weeks ago. Well, more like a month ago. And I'm going to clean it really, really well. I did remove the hardware and we're not going to be using it. So I got 
I took put that one to the side, but I'm not going to throw it away because you never know when I'm going to need it. Once it was nicely clean, I dried it. And then I'm going to uh, make that little mixture of paint and spackle that I do. I know a lot of you know I do have a lot of new viewers. So this is just a little mixture that I make just to make the paint a little bit more on the rougher side. And that way it gives the bottle a little bit of an illusion that is ceramic instead of glass. So I'm just going to brush it on. And then basically you just want it in the consistency of like maybe like a, a like a milkshake i think that's what best describes it makes me want to drink a milkshake now but i'm just gonna brush it with a sideway motion just to kind of give it that round um, look to it and i'm gonna do it all the way from the bottom to the top I am then going to take more of that chalk paint from Dixie Belle in the Daisy color and I am going to paint the bottle but only the bottom two thirds of the bottle. And now the top I am going to paint white and it's just going to be a rough coat and the reason why is because we are actually going to do a new technique here. I've actually seen other creators do something like this but I had yet to do anything myself so I am going to try it. I am going to refill my white paint bottle with a brand new can because I want this my bottle to be very 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 full and so I need also a container that has a wide mouth just like my paint container does so I'm just going to dip the bottle just like you see all the way in till it touches the bottom bring it back out and then I realize I need a little bit more so I just dunk it right back in <laughs> and pull it out and then I'm going to flip it fairly quickly so that the paint starts dripping that's the look I'm going for it's just going to drip down all the way down to the table and I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours there's a little bit closer look at that drip it's beautiful and I wish it would have stayed to where the drips were like just there but actually they all touched at the bottom but it turned out really nice once it was dry I realized that it did crackle a little bit and it was not the look I was going for however it's going to work and I think it still has a lot of character but ideally I would want it to be a little bit smoother but it's okay you live and learn, right? Maybe next time I'll try something different. I'm going to take some more of that thinner white ribbon and I'm just going to make a very simple bow in the front. Again, we're sticking with the pure white and the yellow combination. And then I'm going to add some of these little, I don't know what they are, but they're yellow and they look, they're just little pointy balls, I guess. I don't know what they are, guys, but if you do know, let me know in the comments. Um, um, right inside of the vase and I think those turned out super cute. Instead of the concrete, I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at blues. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Steady on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. For this next DIY, I am going to take this empty container of, it's like a protein shake. <laughs> My husband gets these and this is a massive container, guys. So I am going to remove the top as well as the sticker. Now, there's going to be a lot of stickiness residue left over, but I'm not going to mind because I am going to paint over it and I'm also going to use some spackle. You know what I'm talking about. I've done this on several of my DIYs. I just use some spackle and some paint, mix it together and that way it creates a kind of like a thicker mixture and it just makes any container, anything you're painting seem like it has a lot, almost like ceramic or even sometimes cement. But um, so that's the look I'm going for and I'm just going to give the whole thing one coat of this mixture. Once that first coat was dry, I am now going to use regular chalk paint. This is Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. And I am going to paint and give it one coat, but just about two thirds of the jar. And then on the top 
third of the container. I am going to paint it using Agave Waverly chalk paint. Now I am going to use this stencil that I got at Target Dollar Spot. It came three in a little packet and I thought it was really cute design. And I'm going to use some more of that spackle. Now this is just the spackle, no paint. And I'm going to start to spread it and just filling in the stencil. I'm only going to use two of those rows of the stencil and I'm going to do it right where the blue and the white meat and that way it just kind kind of just adds this detail that is like a raised stencil and i think it turned out so beautiful I got this ribbon at Dollar General during the Christmas season and i'm just going to add it on the top to hide the thread and also to add just that texture that it has it almost looks like drop cloth and i'm just going to wrap it around secure it with hot glue and then i'm going to add some daisies to this container and i think this turned out amazing can you believe this was literally going to be tossed in the trash and i just love 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 the look it has For this next DIY, I am going to take one of these little champagne, little kind of like votive or what is this? Like a little glass. And I'm going to use that same little mixture I used earlier. And I'm just going to give it one coat of this and then one coat of rust -Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Now I'm gonna take the Waverly Moss Paint and I'm going to give it a kind of like a heavy dry brush. So dry brushing is when you have a little bit of paint on the brush and you very, very lightly brush on a surface. However, this one I'm adding a little bit of it on the heavier side and I'm just gonna keep that side to side round look and I hope the pictures do it justice, but the texture on this little vase is amazing. Using that spackle and paint mixture gave it such a cool texture. It actually feels like ceramic. Look how beautiful this looks and it can actually be done in any color. All right, my friends, so for this DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree glass vase and I am going to do a little technique that I was inspired by, let me tell you, strawberries. Yep, these exact strawberries. <laughs> I saw this as I was scrolling through, through somewhere on the internet and I must have been hungry, but I thought, oh my gosh, how cool would that be if I used that technique, but instead of frosting, use paint. So here I am, I'm trying it out. So I'm just going to literally do this to the entire vase. This took me like a minute. So this is probably goes on the record of the fastest DIY I've ever made. <laughs> but what a cool little technique. And could you imagine using maybe multiple colors, mixing them or maybe even doing like a row of one color and then another row of another color. Oh man, the possibilities are endless. 
such a beautiful technique all inspired by yummy strawberries but anyways that's it for this one i'm gonna let it dry and add some um, flowers and i think it turned out beautiful so simple so easy anyone can make Next DIY, I'm going to take one of these hula, it's like a luau kind of Hawaiian skirt. And it's from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to start, I taped it a little bit there to hold it in place. And I'm just going to start braiding three strands at a time. And I'm going to do that. And I believe I did about eight or nine, maybe 10 strands here or there. It don't matter. So then I took this vase that I recently got also at the Goodwill. And although it is beautiful, it did have some scratches on it. You really can't tell. Maybe a little bit right there. So I wanted to give it a new look. So I'm going to start to hot glue these strands, um, braided strands, all the way to kind of like where the white meets the yellow. So I wanted to keep um, kind of like the same half and half, half textured, half not, but it's going to be painted white again because I am going to have a, a theme here of just nice, bright, airy white theme. However, again, you can do this with any other color. I think it would look beautiful, maybe even two-toned, um, even ombre look. But I just love the texture that the grass um, strands gave it at the bottom, and I thought it was really, really cool. Once I had everything braided, or not braided, but yeah, braided and glued, I'm going to give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band and the Linen White. And that's it guys another easy easy one um the braiding part took the longest but it's it's not hard it's just braiding all right my friends this is it for today i'm so happy that i was able to bring you all these inspiration for you let me know in the comments which one is your favorite or which one you'd like to recreate if you're visiting for the first time thank you for stopping by i hope you enjoy the video and i hope you consider joining our youtube family and if you are returning thank you so much for coming back I'm going to have a playlist here with tons more of inspiration for you. Check it out. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.